Now, the analogy that I use when I explain dyslexia to dyslexics and indeed to teachers is that of a television set. So, we have our television set. Lee Pascal, teacher, author and lecturer, has been working in the field of dyslexia for over 35 years. In this workshop, he gives teaching assistants an insight into dyslexia, what it is, how pupils with this kind of difficulty learn, and some practical techniques on how they can best be supported by teaching assistants. But the aerial of the TV isn't quite focused onto the transmitter. So what happens if the aerial of a television set isn't focused onto the transmitter? Pictures get confused. B's look like D's, look like P's, look like Q's. So looks like was. Does looks like dose. On looks like no, form looks like from. All these images get confused. And there's another problem too, the connector between the VCR and the TV, a little bit wobbly. On a good day, it's right in there. On a bad day, ooh, it's a little bit loose. You got it yesterday! That was yesterday. Today, can't remember it. We're talking about auditory and visual memory. Dyslexics do not see things, nor hear things, nor remember things the way that we do. I had the perfect definition given me by a kid who came to me in year five. He had just transferred to the school and he was feeling very nervous and trepidatious and upset and I could see, you know, he was just getting his way around and finding his way around the school and new places and, and new subjects and you know, this sort of thing. So, of course, I wanted to make him feel at ease. So I gave him a spelling test. And I said, no, no, I said, no, no, I said, Anthony, when you're with me, spelling is not your problem, okay? It's my problem. You make loads of mistakes, loads of mistakes, okay? And I'm the one that, I'm going to go home tonight, and I'm going to say, oh, Anthony, what am I going to do about his spelling? Oh, my goodness, his spelling is... So immediately his shoulders come down. He realizes his teacher's off his nut, but he doesn't have to worry about spelling, right? So I said, Anthony, I'm going to give some really evil, nasty words to try. Just give him a try. Don't worry about it. I said, how about the word many? M-A-N-Y, no problem. I thought, great. I said, how about the word said? S-A-I-D, no problem. I said, how about the word does? D-O-E-S, no problem. That's brilliant. I said, how about the word because? Can you spell the word because? And he looked up and he said, oh yeah, sometimes. And that's it. That's it. On a good day, there it is. On a bad day, it's as though I've never seen it before in my life. You got it right yesterday! That was yesterday. Today, I'm sorry, it's gone. It's gone. We have to understand why it's happening. Anthony has to understand why it's happening. His teachers have to understand. His parents have to understand. Then once we understand why it's happening, what the difficulty is, we can start to treat it the same as we would any other difficulty within the classroom. Before we think about how dyslexics learn, it might be an idea for us to think about how we learn. So what I'd like us to do, I'm going to ask you to draw something, okay? It's not a complicated drawing. It's the British Rail symbol. It's still being used on all railway stations. Give it a try. Don't worry about it. Any way you like, okay? Give it a try. Give it a try. The symbol that tells you that it's a railway station, okay? Uh, uh, no peeking, please. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Now, did anybody get it? Could you raise your hand if you got it, please? Thank you. Raise your hand if you got it. Okay, focus on, please. Thank you very much indeed. There you go. Did anybody else get it? You got it as well. I saw your hand up. Yes. Did anybody else get it? Yes, you got it as well. Back. There we go. Congratulations. Those three that got it, congratulations. You have good visual memories. You should be very proud of yourselves. Well done. That's excellent. Swat. <laughs> as for the rest of you, those of you that didn't get it, what's the matter with you? Now, you might say to me quite justifiably, this is a silly argument because we don't look at the rail symbol to learn the rail symbol. We look at it to get the information behind it. Well, keep in mind when a dyslexic is reading, it's enough to get the information behind it or to decode the words, to understand what's going on, to put all the sounds together. To remember the shape of the word requires a different skill altogether. We could all read that. As soon as I put that symbol on the board, we all went, oh yeah. But could we spell it? Only three of us. Only three of us could spell it. With the person sitting next to you, would you please just work with each other to remember that shape? See if you can come up with some ideas, okay? Right. Good. Okay, any ideas here? Two parallel lines with a Z on its side. A Z on its side, yeah, excellent, good. Good, excellent, perfect, yeah. And what have we got here? Two parallel lines and um, a falling down sta staircase. Oh, God. Okay, yes, yes, the staircase going, that's excellent. Yeah, good one, good image. Okay, very good. The first thing just about all of us did is we reached for something to learn with. We reached for a pen. Now, there are very few rules that I pass on to my dyslexics, but from this age all the way up to that age is for them never to try and learn anything without a pen in their hand. It immediately gets them involved into active learning. And then you are using all sorts of methods to learn. 
You were using visual methods. You were looking at it saying, well, what does it look like? So I had people saying, well, it looks like railway tracks. It looks like a Z. It looks like a bolt of lightning, the electricity symbol. And then you were talking about it. You were discussing it. So I had people saying, well, it's like one train coming and one train going, right? Like RailTrack doesn't know if it's coming or going, right? Uh, we had people talking about a, a staircase coming down as well. That was a good image. And some people were writing it down a few, a few times. This is another memory. It's called the kinesthetic memory. Kinesthetic just means the memory of the hand, movement. So keeping in mind, using eyes, ears, and hand, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, dyslexics can learn, provided they're shown how to learn. Let's try a little experiment. While you're looking at me, would you please just write, just write your name. Just write your name while you're looking at me. Good. Now we're going to try another word. Could you get your, oh sorry, check your name, make sure you crossed your, well you can cross your T's, dot your I's, yeah, looks good, yeah, excellent, good. Underneath your name, could you get your pen ready to write another word with it ready, touching the page. Could you look at me please, and while you're looking at me, you please just write the word, constabulary. Good, 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 excellent, good. When I asked you for your name, we were all like this. <laughs> when I asked you for the word constabulary, <laughs> the brows fart, ah, how are we going to do this? Your signature, your name, you didn't have to think about. It just flowed off your pen. You've built up a whole storehouse of words you don't have to think about. This is the memory of the hand, the memory we use all the time, the memory that I use today to tie my tie. Uh, we can all tie our shoelaces and talk at the same time. We don't have to think about it. But when it came to the word constabulary, constabulary is a word which I trust you haven't had to write before, so you had to think, ah, how am I going to write this word constabulary? And this is where other memories kicked in. The sort of memories that we can work on with the kid with any sort of specific learning difficulty, I promise you. Some of you, when it came to the word constabulary, you couldn't look at me. I know it's painful, but you couldn't look at me because you were trying to find the word. You were looking for it in the room. I saw one person, she was looking up there for the word constabulary, right? Just over there, she was looking for the word constabulary. I saw somebody else trying to get it from the ceiling, constabulary. Some of our kids have this amazing memory, they don't even know they've got it. These are dyslexic kids. Where I can show a dyslexic, say the word does, all right? So I can write it down, D-O-E-S. And I put it on a card and I say, write. You see this word? Would you please throw it on the wall? What? Throw it on the wall. Okay. And I say to the kid, is it really up there? And if the kid's under the age of 12, they still want to please you. They say, yes. So you say, right. If it's really up there, spell it backwards. And if the kid goes, oh, uh, S-D-O, it's not really up there. But if the kid immediately goes S-E-O-D, it's there. Now spell it forwards, D-O-E-S, good. Leave it there, two minutes later. Do you remember that word you put in the wall, yep? What is it, does? Good, you wanna copy it into your book? Sure, D-O-E-S. I'm not asking them to deface your walls, right? What they're doing is they're using the wall as a blank space. No more than one word per week, please. Limit, 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 if you're using this method. If the kids adapt to this method, one word per week. And then eventually, they see it on the wall, they write it down, eventually it becomes part of the memory of the hand. You can have them go like that and rub it off the wall. Good, you know it. All right, but one word at a time. Not all kids are able to do this, but some dyslexics are able to do this beautifully. Others with the word constabulary, you weren't relying on your eyes, you were relying on your ears. And I could see you saying it aloud while you're writing it, right? Constabulary. <laughs> right? There you go. Hey, we've got kids, I promise you, dyslexic kids, can't remember, can't remember anything. But they're the same kids. They hear a song twice on the radio, and it's not just driving them crazy. They're driving everybody crazy with it, right? And we, or a parent, or teachers, want to scream at these kids, if you can do that with a song, why can't you do it with your science? They can. I want us as TAs, please, never to feel guilty about saying things aloud to these kids, repeating things aloud, spelling words aloud, going through the uh, 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 multiplication tables with them aloud, so they hear things over and over again. So keeping in mind, using eyes, ears, and hand, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, they do pick it up. For years as a class teacher, if every kid came up to me and said, excuse me, sir, how do you spell the word beautiful? I'd hand the kid a dictionary. What was I doing making that kid look up the word beautiful in the dictionary? Let's think about this as teachers now. If you're looking up something in the dictionary, you're using eyes and hand to write the word. There's something missing. If I spell it aloud to you, you're using eyes, hand, and ears. 
please, if a dyslexic needs a spelling, if they're working with us as TAs, please do not make them look up words in the dictionary. Just spell the word aloud. He's seeing it, he's writing it, he's hearing it. Well, there's no such thing as the method for learning spelling, but there is a method that one might like to consider that pulls in a variety of approaches. And it's the old business about look, cover, remember, write. So that if, for example, your pupil is having the word with uh, difficulty with the word does, so your pupil perhaps copies the word, D-O-S-E, sorry, D-O-E-S, looks at it, covers it with a sheet, preferably of white paper so that they can try and visualize the word on it, spell the word aloud, D-O-E-S, and writes it again. And then again, looks at it, covers it, remembers it, tries to picture the word on the white sheet, and then tries it again, D-O-E-S, and says it aloud, D-O-E-S. And then I promise you, after a few weeks, that word does becomes part of the memory of the hand. You'll notice that I'm doing it in joined up writing. And there's a reason for that. This feels no different to the hand to that. It's four disjointed letters. But this feels considerably different to that, and I want my hand to get used to that. So please, joined up writing for the dyslexics. I also get my dyslexics to spell words aloud in joined up writing. So I get my dyslexics into the rhythm of words, D-O-E-S, M-A-N-Y, S-A-I-D. And then you can get into families, N-I-G-H-T, S-I-G-H-T, R-I-G-H-T, -I -I but so that they flow together. Instead of N-I-G-H-T, N-I-G-H-T. It becomes a word, and it helps the dyslexic to remember those words much, much more easily if they're joined together. What we have to get across to parents and what we have to accept as TAs is that the class teacher is teaching the children to read. Even the dyslexics, even the dyslexics, especially the dyslexics, are learning to read within the class. With us, there is an opportunity for the child to show off what they've learned in class. And they can't show off with something they find incredibly difficult. So please, the easier the better, whether it's a book, a comic magazine, anything. When they're working with us, please, easy books. I remember once I was working with a, a 10 year old and uh, I said, why not use the remaining time, because I'm going to be working with somebody else, why not use the remaining time to do a bit of reading? I hate reading, Mr. Pascal. Well, come on now, I've got, I've got all sorts of books here. Just pick any book. I hate reading, Mr. Pascal. I said, look, I said, I've got comic books there. Pick up a comic. I hate reading, Mr. Pascal. I've got a skateboard magazine. You're into skateboarding. Pick up a I hate reading, Mr. Pascal. By this time, I'm getting, I'm human, you know, so I reach in on my briefcase, I pull out a book, throw it on the table. Read. Shorty the hero reading age of about seven and a half, right? So there's Stephen, and he opens up the book. Mr. Pascal, yes, Stephen, what's this word, please? Oh, he's gonna get to me, right? The Stephen, here we go. Okay, he's gonna make me pay for this, right? Throwing this book at him, right? Yeah, okay, thank you, Mr. Pascal. Shorty the Heron, my best friend. He can't, no, no, he did my, never my one time in my head. I knew I said. And for the first time in his life, it happened. Here he was. He didn't have to decode. He didn't have to figure out. He didn't have to work at it. He was doing what we do. He was looking at the first couple of letters of the word, the shape. He was looking at the context. He was just soaking it up. It was wonderful. And at the end of the session, he turned around to me. And he said, Mr. Pascal, do you have another?